Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. I'm the creator of the Divi Events Calendar, the bridge that connects the events calendar with Divi. So in this video, I'm excited to introduce version 2.6 with a lot of new features and updates. So let's take a look at everything that's new. The best place to find everything that's new is on our blog post. We document everything here and that's where you'll have this video. So if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to come over to the blog post and you can also check our change log, which includes all the things and even the smaller updates. So this is 2.6. Now we also sometimes have like 2.5.1, 2.5.2 and all that. So sometimes we cover features that were introduced along the way and we, we cover them in like each major version update. So here we go. Let's take a look at everything that's new. We'll go by module. I think it's easier that way. So we're going to start with the events feed module. Now, one of the first things I'm really excited about is people were asking for a way to have a list of events, but also have them separated by the month. So February, and then here's some events. March, headline, and then here's some events. You know, April, and then here's some events. Great idea. And so we've implemented that. Well, let me show you the screenshot first. It's just in the layout. We, we added it to the layout. Thought that was a good place for it because it only applies when you're in list layout. So list layout number of columns one. When those are you know selected, then you have the show events by month with headings. Now on the front end, all right, so it's gonna look something like this. This is unstyled, but here you can see February and then there's like these three events. Here you can see March and then here you can see April. Now, we this is like the last feature we added in this update. We wanted to get it out. In the next um, smaller update, we are going to add design settings for that. So for now, um, bear with us. But we wanted to get it out and get your feedback. What kind of settings would you like to see to you know adjust that? Let us know pretty soon. All right, next, page pagination custom text. Now, we added a whole bunch of improvements to the pagination. So when you're using the events feed module, you know, there's there's times where you have so many events that you want to have pagination. So we have a load more button where you have some events and you click load more. We have paged, which means there's a next and previous. Pretty simple, like next goes to the next screen, next. We also have numeric, which is like one, two, three, four, and you can click the it's like page. It's it's like page. I call it page and numeric. But anyway. So there's various updates related to that. I don't want to bore you with it, but basically to point out that we added the new default text. It now says previous events and next events. Here's a load more button. I click that and more events load. Page, like I said, next events, and then I click that. And like, see, now I can hit previous events. Numeric is where there's numbers here. So just little things that used to say first, even when we were on the first one and all that. But the main thing is the design settings. Let me show you that. We basically rearranged some things in the design tab. Now, if you go to the design tab in the events feed, you'll see the pagination is now all together. So there's load more button pagination. We already had that. Paged pagination. What that said before was like pagination text. I think that was called that. So now that's paged pagination and we have all the, you know, settings for that. The new one is numeric pagination. And so in here we've added all these things like padding, first and last button background color, first and last button text color, page number background color, page number text color, current page number background color, current page number text, all these things, right? So we, you get the idea. So just making that more mature and you know catching up on some things. Okay, image aspect ratio, someone asked for we added we added these image aspect ratios in in a, in a previous update, but they asked for they wanted to keep it as it was uploaded. I said okay, you know original as uploaded will make as an option. So we did that. Here's one for the events calendar pro users. Again, this only affects you if you have pro. If you have the free version, you can ignore it. But now you can display events by series. So it, series is a feature in their pro version. It's just like another like kind of like a taxonomy in a way, like a way to organize events in a series. So if you have recurring events, they're in that series. Well, what if you wanted to display events, not, you know, instead of just by category and organizer and venue, 
We also added the checkboxes for series. Okay, and that's only in the events feed module at this point. Uh, we'll try to add that to the calendar also. Speaking of the calendar, we added a new number of events per day. Let me just go show you that. So the reason we added this is because sometimes I've seen customers where you have a lot of events. And on one day, if you have more than like one or two, it gets really long. <laughs> it's just crazy. So what you can do is like this setting here shows number of events per day. It's going to be right in the module settings. You'll see that. You can set that. And now if it's over that amount, it will add it as like this little pop up here. Now we're going to work on improving this, but for now, if I say I only want to show one event, but this one, there's three events here. Well, now I can click on two more and now I can see this one, this one, and this one. When you hover over this like second pop up, I can now hover and see the tool tip for the other ones. Okay. So that's cool. We'll, we'll keep, you know, improving on that type of thing. Same thing as in the events feed, original as uploaded aspect ratio. And that applies to that thumbnail and also to the tool tip. Same setting added to both. Now on the events page module, we've just added a lot of improvements to the links. As you know, in our plugins, we have a lot of link settings. So like you can enable or disable a link for the categories and the venues and all these things that when you click on them in the details, it goes to their page. So if I click on, you know, the music category, I go to the music category page. All the settings related to that, like opening in a new tab and all that have all been updated and organized. We added this new one for location. So if I say the location is, you know, this address, now I can literally click it and it will go to that on the map. So that's a nice improvement. Also here you can see with the add to calendar button, we, we did have like Google, Apple, and Outlook, and now we've added the variations. See, okay, let me explain. What happens is the events calendar updates, and then we need to piggyback on that. We need to also update. So they've rearranged their options, added you know, Outlook 365 and Outlook Live. So then when they do something like that, then we also have to do it in our module. So we went ahead and did that. And I'm going to jump ahead. The same thing happened with this event subscribe module. Did you know we had an event subscribe module? Basically, you can say subscribe to calendar and then these options appear. Now, the previous versions of our module, I think there was only three. The events calendar updated with these, so we copied them exactly. So now we're caught up to them. What we need to do is work on the module because it's it's like a beta module and it has some issues. We need to fix some design settings and stuff, um, but it functions. It functions fine. It's just, there's not a lot of customization yet. But anyway, we added a new filter in the, in the, in the events filter modules. Now you can filter by future and past. So that's it for this update. You can check our full change log if you're interested, but those are the main things. And yeah, as we look to the future, we're excited. Um, we have lots of ideas, lots of things on our list. There's also changes coming to Divi that we have to account for and consider what do we need to do to, you know, work with 5.0 uh, of Divi and all that. So we're excited about everyone who continues to love on this plugin. And I mean, many times a day I get messages thanking me for this plugin and it's, it's crazy. Um, it's just amazing. Thank you, and um, we hope that we can continue to release big updates and small updates and just fine tune everything and you know, continue to add new features as well as we have been always. We are in active development. Um, there's never a day where we're not working on this plugin and um, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. So thank you all for your support and your patience as we work on it and when we release new updates, thank you also. If you enjoy the plugin, you can leave a review and comments and all that stuff. We appreciate that. All right, we'll see you all in the next video.